Another no-go, easy-go. <laughs> Let's get into this one. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another season. Hopefully this is going to be a good year. I know everything is a little nuts. Gas prices, diesel prices, electricity prices. Everything is stupid expensive for probably no reason at all. But, you know... Let's get ripped off while we're at it. Anyway, that's a little bit of a rant, but anyway, we're gonna jump into this 13 EasyGo RXV. This is a gas cart. Uh, this one here was having a bit of an issue. It was more like a, let me look here at the work order. Let's see, shuts off randomly, won't start. Customer installed a new fuel pump, uh, carburetor, air filter, and spark plug. So we're probably not gonna have to touch any of that, but we will double check it, make sure everything's good with it, uh, just to, be sure that it's all where it's supposed to be, it's working and all that stuff. Just to be sure, we gotta make sure it's all good. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get this thing up on the ramps, we'll pop the seat off. Uh, when I went to pick the cart up, this would not start. It would crank over and it had a good strong crank, so the, that tells me the battery's good, but it just wouldn't fire off, so we're gonna try to see what's going on with it. I'm kinda leaning towards some carburetor crap in it, but we'll kinda go through a diagnostics process here and I'll kinda walk you through what I do. All right, let's get the seat off. It's that time of the year. Everybody is mowing. They all know I'm making videos right now, so they all said, hey, let's go mow our yards. That golf cart guy is making videos. Not really. That's not how. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something though if they all did that? They're like, hey, he's making a video. Let's go. Let's go screw with him. All right. So on the easy goes on the RXVs with this Kawasaki engine, carburetor is over here on the driver's side, and it looks like we have something screwy here. Let's see. Nope. Okay, never mind. Everything is... Okay, that is... Different. Yeah, see, the, when people put their own stuff on, it's kind of like, uh, what? All right, the, carbur the bracketry on the carburetor looked a little funky. All right, so what I'm going to do, throw some gloves on. Yeah, you can get in here and not use gloves and deal with all that, but I don't like the smell of gas on my hands. Plus, I really don't want that crap entering my bloodstream, all that stuff. All right, so they did new spark plug. They put the air filter thing on backwards. That's upside down. Air filter looks okay, I guess. It's not bad. I mean, I've, I've seen them worse, but this goes on the bottom because when this is running, I don't know if you see that, this thing here is supposed to go down, face down. Uh, it's basically like an automatic dust removal system. Um, it's a commercial engine style air filter box. I like this air filter style. I'm kind of not a fan of the flat round ones or the flat ones anymore. Uh, not a fan of that crappy little fuel filter, but you know, it is what it is, I guess. The, um, all right, so one thing I've already noticed, I don't know, can you guys see me? The petcock, let's get in on this, because this I noticed just now. So the, this will work here. The little rubber tank thing, you can see here is not in all the way, the grommet. Isn't in although this is the tank vent, not this, but this thing here. Look at um, they wrapped duct tape and some schmoo. Oh, look at look at see the adhesive in the tape is getting in the fuel. Ooh, let's fix this. This is not correct. I have these gaskets or these grommets. Let's just put a new one in because this isn't right. That tape can fall off and get inside the fuel tank, and then that little those adhesive things will get all over all over the fuel system and cause issues. I've seen that happen before. Look at you can see the schmoo on there. Let's let's get a pliers. I like to use linesman pliers for this because 
they just grip onto these these uh, hose clamps very nicely. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull that out. Now this thing here, you can see how gross it is. It looks like either some sort of adhesive, maybe? I don't know. It's either adhesive from the duct tape, which is what it feels like. Um, let me see if I can zoom out of here, because I know you guys probably can't see what the hell I'm doing. All right, so we'll back out just a little bit. The only way you're going to get this grommet back in the tank is if you remove it from the siphon tube here, like this. It's actually in good shape, so we could reuse it. Try to save the guy a little bit of money here. Let me try to clean this goober crap off of here, because it's... I'm going to use Bright Clean. I like Bright Clean because it's not as aggressive on rubber and plastic like carburetor cleaner is. Um, let's see here. It, this rubber piece is still good. It's not, it does have a little tiny rip in it, but it's not bad. You know, try to save yourself some money. If it was ripped all the way up past the point where it makes contact with the tank, I would say, yeah, let's change it but it's down below it, so it's not really critical. But you put the grommet in first, okay? And then kinda, whoop, I might actually have to replace it. Looks like it's a little boogered up. Oh, well, okay. Oh, it's odd. Get in there. Okay. Just trying to make sure. Okay, there we go. So you get that in there, you get it nice and flush. Let me get some brake clean on this paper towel here. We'll clean the schmooey, gooey, sticky crap off of. It's all over my gloves and my fingers are sticking together, so that's not, that's not fun. It looks like they've really been fighting with this thing for a while. What I am looking for is cracks. Unfortunately, I don't have any of these dip tubes, siphon tubes. But we'll, we'll try it. We could always change it later. We'll see what happens. And then you take it and you, whoop. It peed a little fuel out because I put the thing on. That tells me that the tank vent might not be. No, this is a roll anti cipher. Uh, this is a rollover vent for the tank. Yeah, it's a tank vent, but when the cart, if you ever roll the cart over, that is supposed to stop fuel from leaking out. But in its current current state, it's allow it allows the um, the tank to vent because the gas cap is a sealed system. All right, so that problem number one, that's, that's fixed. And he's got all these hose clamps on. Now I have seen these crappy little fuel filters leak around this seam. So that to me is not abnormal. Uh, the other thing that it could be is if the tank vent isn't working correctly, the uh, tank could be creating a vacuum while he's driving and not allowing the pump to work properly. The gas smells okay. Let's look, tighten until clicks. Okay, that seems to be okay. Um, it could be in this shutoff, uh, which we're gonna see when we unhook the line at the carburetor. Looks like he's replaced all the fuel lines. Um, yeah, okay, so that's that. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disconnect the fuel line at the carburetor and then run up back to the gas tank and make sure that it's actually pumping correctly. I know he said that he has changed the fuel pump, but I wanna, I wanna see what's going on here. So we'll take the 
fuel line off. It's just a quarter inch hose clamp. Pop that off. There's gas running all over the place, so I know there's fuel in it. So we don't lose this. I'm going to slide it. Oh, you can't see me. Slide that all the way up on there. Stick the other end in the gas tank. And then with that in the gas tank, I'll take a key here. Let's try that. All right, so what I want to do is I just want to see what the flow looks like. You guys hopefully can see that. Oh yeah, we got good flow. Yeah, there's pretty much a steady stream of fuel coming up through into the fuel filter, so that's a good thing. All right, I'm just gonna leave that in there for the moment because I don't really feel like having all that gas go all over the floor. Um, now what I'm gonna do is we know we have good fuel flow. So we know the pump is working. We know that the, the vacuum line from the crankcase to the fuel pump is good. So now what we're gonna do is pop off the, pop the spark plug out so we can take a look and make sure we have spark. All right, so you can use something like this, right? You can take this gig here. This is basically a neon light. Hook it up to your spark plug wire. And then if, if you don't have one of these, I'll show you another way. Just crank it over. I actually don't see spark. I do not see spark. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean there is no spark. Uh, back the spark plug out. Actually, I'm going to shut the fuel off because there's no sense in that. So what I'll do is I'll pull the spark plug out. I'm going to check it here. It's a beep. Oh, geez. FT, F7TC. It is a uh, generic junky little plug. I don't know. I can't even pronounce that. F7TC is the number. It wasn't really tight. Wing Zing. Made in China. Uh, junk. Boy, I hope this didn't kill his uh, thingy. So you plug the spark plug in if you're going to test it, right? Plug the spark plug in. Make sure it's touching a part of the engine that's grounded. Okay, it does have spark. It's not very strong though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put the right spark plug in this. It's a BPR 5ES. I'm going based on what the Kawasaki manual says. All right, let's see if we have a better spark. Boy, I hope his, uh... he has no, like practically no spark. You know what it could be too? It could be the foot switch. Okay. There's barely any spark. So I'm not thinking a fuel issue at all. I think he has a spark issue. I'm gonna give him back the spark plug, but I'm putting in the right plug. I think it's okay, it's over on the workbench there or the toolbox. Um, yeah, like I said, he's, he's changed a bunch of parts. I really don't advise just throwing parts at it. Uh, you got to really go through and diagnose. So we have learned so far without taking anything apart other than the spark plug and the fuel line is that we have a lack of good spark. Okay, so I'm actually going to reinstall the fuel line on the carburetor. I'm starting to believe that it's not that. I think it's, he might have killed his ignition coil with that no name crappy spark plug. I have seen that in the past. Uh, I, I've seen some crappy little spark plugs actually kill ignition coils. It doesn't happen frequently and it's not very common, but I have seen it happen where a cart was running perfectly fine and then somebody puts in some Amazon, eBay purchase spark plug, and then all of a sudden now it's, you have nothing. Give it a little bit of choke. It doesn't really need it because it's, it just doesn't have the spark. 
That's very unfortunate. Boy, I wonder if I'd be able to get to that ignition coil. I might have to get an ignition coil for it. I think that is probably, oh, yeah, this. wow, this fuel pump is really not in here nicely, is it? Well, we're gonna reroute this back to where it belongs. While we're here, reattach this clamp. I like these spring clamps because they are constantly clamping down on the, oh, okay, he's got that one there, but that's all right. Let's move that there. Okay. All right, so we know now, based on what we have done, that we don't have spark. We don't have good spark, I should say. There's a very, very, very faint, very faint spark. I'm kind of thinking that that's our problem. Okay, so it's been a little bit of time that has passed since I have worked on this cart. I recorded, at least I had thought I recorded, removing the floor pan, or the, the rubber floor mat, the pedal assembly cover, getting in there and kind of showing you guys and talking about the theory and operation of the foot switch. Well, my dumbass didn't hit record like I thought I did, or if I did hit record, something happened and it didn't record. So no footage on that. I'm not taking this all apart again. We'll do that in another video. Anyway, after going through all of that diagnosis, I learned that we need an ignition coil. Thankfully, I was able to get a genuine OEM, well, a genuine Kawasaki ignition coil. So we got to take the blower cover off and in looking in the process of doing this, <sighs> let me get you guys under. Oops, I'm hitting buttons on my camera that I shouldn't be hitting. I don't know what I did. Okay, so on this RXV, in the process of VCGO, kind of coming to the complaints that they got about the oil filter, when you take it off, it drains all over the entire subframe here, the engine mount. Uh, they changed this bracketry, okay? So before, this used to be a solid thing here and it was all different. And then this bracket came down like this and you had easy access to the bolt that's behind here and the bolt that's behind here, which hold the blower cover on the engine. Well, guess what? Now you can't get to those two bolts at all. There is no access to them and there's no room behind here. I can barely get my finger in between here and where that bolt is that holds the blower cover on. So that basically means you have to take the engine out of the golf cart to get the blower cover off. So instead of, you know, this is gonna turn into a rant, so if you don't wanna hear what I have to say, click off or whatever. Instead of like being, hey, you know, they might need to get into this cover for some reason, possibly to maybe change the ignition coil, since the Kawasaki doesn't have an easy access point to where the ignition coil is. This is kind of on both of them, I guess. Not really, it's on easy go. They could have engineered a reinforced opening here to get a 10 millimeter quarter drive socket into there to get to that bolt and to this one. But no, they re-engineered this damn bracket so you can't get to it and there's no way to get a tool in there. On the other RXVs, you can see this is the older one, I think. Yeah, this is the older one where the bracket where the oil filter's right here and it drips all over the subframe and gets everywhere and runs down the whole side of the motor and makes a mess. What do you see? There's a bolt and there's a bolt. You can easily gain access to the blower cover bolts with this design. And you, want, you guys wonder why I hate EasyGo so much. So in order to remove the engine, if it, even just to loosen the engine up enough, to move it around so I can actually get in here to reach those two 10 millimeter bolts at the bottom of the, the engine. Now this goes without saying, like you can go ahead and probably cut little access, pan, access holes out if you want. Can't do that to, another, to a customer's cart. But if it was my own cart, I probably would never own an easy go. But if it was my cart, I would probably just go ahead and drill it out, drill out a big enough hole to get a 10 millimeter quarter drive socket in there because they're not 
very big bolts or anything so but anyway if you had to take the engine out you got to take the clutch off and behind this clutch there is i want to say t40 uh pan head screws that mount to the side of the engine through this i'm going to say quarter inch thick plate steel which i don't understand why that's there no idea what the hell that's even for because there could have been other ways of mounting this and stiffening up this drivetrain but nope easy go ahead to go and make it over freaking complicated and over engineered and make it much more difficult to do simple damn tasks because you know what they had it had it really nice with the robin engine because the ignition coil was on on the side of the motor cdi box was in the control box now then they went with this crap and decided to have everything buried in the motor so it's all difficult to get to those of you wondering why I hate on EasyGo so much is because of their stupid ass engineering. Whoever designs this crap, you need to get your ass underneath the seat and start taking this shit apart and putting it back together and then redesign it and then send it out to production. Okay, rant over, apologize for the swearing. Let's get into fixing this pile of crap. And guys, I wanna be very clear about something here. When I bash on EasyGo, I'm not bashing on the owners of these carts because they don't know. Most people don't know what it takes to fix this thing, okay? Most people don't have a clue. That's why they call people like me and pay them money to do the work so they don't have to. That is typically how it happens. And I'll be honest, you know, all golf carts are junk when they're broken. So just to dispel that right now, I'm gonna try to do this and not get in your way. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it. Okay. Ooh, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. So there's this 10 millimeter right here. Oh, it's loose. Got it loose. It's right underneath this um, doohickey here. I'm gonna actually take off this one here. And like I said, I've had a bunch of these engines out of these carts to send out for repair, rebuild rather. Uh, I don't do anything, re I don't do engine rebuilding in house anymore. It's just, I don't have the all the proper tools and the uh, machining equipment to do it. So I just, it's much more cost effective for me to send it out. All right, so one thing to keep in mind when you remove this 10 millimeter bolt down here, it goes through a clamp that holds this line to the fuel pump. And there's also an engine grounding point right here. You gotta make sure you return that back to that point. Um, in fact, I actually <laughs> unbolted the wrong one. There's two 10 millimeter bolting points right here. One of them has the gro engine grounding point and this clamp, which apparently you don't need to undo. So I'm gonna do the right thing and pretend we didn't do it. I'm gonna actually reinstall this and undo the right one. Look at that, plastic on this thing is so sharp I cut my glove open. Okay. I make mistakes too, folks. I am what we call human. Oh, he's not using power tools, wow. Yeah, I'm sure some of you are shocked at that. Well, I could, but I don't wanna. Oh my God. Cramping in my hands. Why couldn't it have just been a crap in the carburetor? No, oh, not crap in the carburetor. It's, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and be the hardest possible repair we can. All right, so you can see it's obnoxiously long for absolutely no reason. It could have been a much shorter one, but nah. That's not easy. We can't do that. That is a 13. I'm gonna use a 3 8 drive for this one. Am I in the way? Probably. Okay. This one, these ones usually come out easier. And I'm only removing this stuff to give me easier access. It's probably not, well, yeah, actually it is gonna be necessary because you just take this thing right off and throw it away. And here's that 10 millimeter bolt right here I was taking out. And you can see they're shouldered. Ooh, can you see it? See how it's got a shoulder on it? So you can only go in so far. Let's get this 5 16 We're gonna take this hose clamp off. This is a 5 16 nut driver. 
I've had a couple people ask why I don't do like what tools, oops, I dropped it on the ground, what, uh, like a tools list. It's like, well, I try to tell you what size the tool is that I'm using, so then you can pick your poison when it comes to whatever you want to do. All right, so I'm going to remove, I don't know if you can see it, the air filter housing here completely. This isn't totally necessary, but it will give me better access. Just all you got to do when you remove this stuff, guys, is just kind of keep your parts, your hardware together. Like all intake parts, I'll keep together. Like I got these two bolts and two lock washers and a hose clamp for the air filter. I'll keep those aside and then I'll just take it and flip it out of the way. You could actually, you know, unplug the evap line and put it over here. But you see how this opens right up now? There's all this room for activities. Now we have a quarter inch. Oops, that's not a quarter inch. I think that's probably, yeah, oh, it is a quarter inch, okay. My eyes were deceiving me. I thought it was gonna be a six millimeter quarter inch hose clamp on the fuel line here. Take that back off, cause we do in fact need to get in there. I'm actually gonna turn the fuel off. Look at that, I got it all over me. That's why I wear gloves. 10 millimeter wrench. And we need the 10 millimeter wrench to take off the intake manifold. They call this a manifold. It's, in my opinion, far from a manifold. I would advise you guys too to even disconnect the ground wire from your, of course that's in the way. Disconnect the ground from your battery I don't have to because, well, quite frankly, I know what I'm doing. Key is off. There's no key in the ignition. Um, we're just going to take this off altogether. This is the PCV breather tube. And it's stuck on my help oh, in there. That just takes the crankcase gases that come up through the valve cover and it gets re directed back into the intake where it is then reburned, kind of an emissions thing. They used to just blow them out into the atmosphere way back in the 70s and 80s until um, emissions crap got in the way. So yeah, this is the manifold. At least that's what they call it. And then you have this um, anti-tamper bracket that has the choke on it. So what I like to do is pop the throttle cable off or the throttle linkage off, slide the carb off, and then to get the choke cable off, you have to kind of rotate and flip around a little bit. And then that'll pop right off. And then set your carburetor. I might actually clean this carburetor since I have it off. I might as well. It's already there. All right. I'm going to attempt. Oh, look at that. I even gave him the wrong damn gasket. Wrong size gasket. Wrong shaped gasket, I should say. Okay, so now the intake stuff is all out of the way. This rod here connects to the governor on the back of the cart. So just don't bend it, otherwise it'll change your geometry. So you can see, I mean, it's really not that difficult to get to. It's just a a pain in the ass. Then we have this one here. This is another 10 mil. This one here, you don't have to take all the way out. It's because it's kind of shouldered. Let's see. It's going to start popping out yet. Nope. Something else holding it. What else is holding it? Oh, you know what? <laughs> I didn't uh, I didn't remove this one here. See if it'll come out with There's this one here on the top. You know, and I like this engine. I like this Kawasaki engine. It's got a lot of power. I believe it's a 13 horsepower engine. 
I just, I don't like, I don't like how the dipstick is set up. Let's see if this will come out now without too much. There we go. I don't like how the dipstick goes through the valve cover. I think that's kind of dumb because it leaves a, it's very difficult to, there we go. Ah, oh, nice. All right, so that clunking noise is the bracket hitting there. Nothing broke. I did not break anything. Um, there is a, a tab back here on a small panel we'll have to kind of fight with. But at least I can now get to the ignition coil. Uh, job easy go for making that difficult. It would have been nice to be able to remove this cover. Um, so now let me see if I can bring you around here. Okay, so down inside here, let me back this out. There's the ignition coil. I already popped off this wire. You can see that little thin wire, that black one? That little tab connects that, or that wire there connects to a tab in here. Let me actually unhook the spark plug wire. And I'll reroute it out of the way so I can show you. Uh, move the light, come on. See that little tiny tang right there, that quarter inch spade connector right by the wire? That is the ground wire that closes to ground when you release the gas pedal, okay? So you let go of the gas pedal, half of that switch under the floor closes to ground, disconnecting or connecting that terminal and shorting out the ignition coil to ground, basically turning off spark. That should only be held in there with either eight or 10 millimeter nuts or bolts. I gotta try to really pry this thing back a little bit here and I'm gonna try to get down in here. Let's see if I could do this. Okay, these are 10 millimeter. I was right. I wasn't 100% sure, I couldn't remember. So now I gotta try to get in here with a ratchet. Now, if it's your cart, you can hack it up all you want. You can cut holes and things and, uh, there we go, that broke loose fairly easily. This should just pop right out of here. You know, you could drill two holes in the bottom motor mount near to where those two 10 millimeter bolts are that hold the bottom of this blower cover on and not have any problem. Um, but being that this is not my cart, I am not about to start hacking holes. Oh, drop that, that's okay, don't need it. This should come right out. I'm not about to start hacking holes in a customer's golf cart, especially when it comes to drilling, you know, modifying the chassis or whatever. Okay, so now we got this out. Now you can see there's our ignition coil and there's that wire I was talking about. Yeah, so let's get the other one in here. All right, so the replacement number. Now this is from a genuine Kawasaki dealer. It's a genuine Kawasaki part. And here's this one here. Here's a new part number. Hopefully you can see it with the glare. There we go. They're very similar, very similar. I did some research on the two part numbers. There's nothing that I can see that's any different. Uh, I think the newer one is a little bit more powerful and it's the part that came up when I searched for it. Let's make sure the, uh, all right, make sure the magnet is nowhere near where I need it here. So I installed the bolt through the coil and now I'm gonna get the coil, get the bolt started. See, like I said, this would be a lot easier if you had access to those two. Um, lower bolts, but oh, I hear a really big truck jake break. But because you don't, you are kind of stuck. So now I'm gonna take a business card. Ooh. That was loud. I'm gonna take a business card. Actually, one of my business cards. <laughs> I'm gonna slide it underneath the coil, put it between the coil and the flywheel. This will give us our gap. And that's really all you need. You don't need to go nuts here. Okay, this is caught on that. That's why it's staying out. What did I do with my wrench? Oh, I dropped it, that's right. Yeah, so we'll get it snug get this bottom one snug. There's just no room because, oh, 
ratchet jumped gears there. Okay. Then we'll tighten this one up. There we go. Throw that over there. Pull my business card out. I'm gonna put the wire on for the ground. If I can get it on there without breaking the damn tab off. Good. Okay. Now I'll get the spark plug wire caught. Spin it around here. Plug it onto the spark plug. Oops, hit the camera. So hopefully when I realign that, there we go. Okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna tighten all the bolts down just yet. I am gonna tighten down this one. There we go. I'm gonna hook the carburetor up. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna check spark. All right, so here's my light that I showed earlier. We're gonna stick this in the spark plug hole and stick this other end on the spark plug. Now we're not gonna to try to run the engine. It's not going to run, because obviously, <laughs> but what I wanna show, if I can, is I wanna show what it's supposed to look like when you have spark. Oh, I need keys. I also have the fuel line off because we don't wanna be pumping fuel all over the place. So now you should be able to see this light glow. And that's what it's supposed to do. Oop, what did I do? What did I jam up here? Well, part of being a good troubleshooter or mechanic or whatever is admitting when you make a mistake. And I made a mistake. I tried cranking the engine over and I thought, I thought I had the engine positioned with the magnet underneath the coil, but I did not. So what's happening now is the engine is binding on the coil. So what I have to do is I have to loosen it up. I don't know why I just, well, I know why I kind of just forgot what I was doing there. Yeah, there we go, should be. Okay, now it rotates freely. Whoops, happens to, ever, happens to the best of us folks. I make mistakes too. But at least I admitted it. I made the mistake. And that coil is <laughs> not letting me get this under there, so I'm gonna try this. I'm just gonna try to, gonna try to get this under here without breaking anything. There we go. No? Can I get this line up here? Rotate that back. I need to get it under both wings here. And then I need to get the magnet over it, like so. Push down, not hard, just enough to where it's... Yeah, okay, so now... And then, it doesn't need to be torqued super hard because you don't want to strip that out. Ooh, look at that, I can get down in here. You probably can't see what the hell I'm doing. Well, I can't see what I'm doing either, so... That's okay. I just popped it in reverse or drive forward, whatever the hell. Okay, let's, uh, let's do that again. Take the card out without dropping it into the motor blower area. There we go. Take this out. Okay. All right, so it's flying past the spark plug now, so or the coil now, so we should be good. All right, so what, like what I was doing before, I'm gonna pull this up here. Readjust that pass there. Pull this up here. Put that there. I took this one all the way out. 
And the reason for that was because I couldn't figure out what the hell was going on. And then I had that moment like that, oh, that's right, kind of moment. I realized I did not properly adjust that. I was like, oh, wait a second, maybe I wasn't on the magnet. And well, lo and behold, I was not on the magnet. And I dropped it again. Let's see if it'll rotate now without... Okay. All right, so that's good. All right, so what I'm going to do again is I'm going to plug this into our spark plug hole. Plug it into our spark plug. Let me reposition the camera again to the light here. So now you should see this thing glow. All right, there you go. See how it's glowing? Now we have regained our spark. So the engine would have run if that was plugged in with fuel and the carburetor and all that stuff, but we didn't have all that stuff hooked up, so we're good. All right, so we plug that back in. I will go ahead and reinstall all of this hardware here. Take this one. Okay. Let's, where did I, oh, I dropped the damn ratchet again. I should probably put a, a rubber band and a bungee cord or something on this ratchet so it stays around my flipping wrist, huh? This is a different angle for you. I usually have you guys up on the light mast so you can see me, but... Okay, there we go. And though that shoulder that's on these bolts, that just helps center the, the mount here, or the lower cover. And then it stops once it hits. You don't have to, like I said, you don't have to ram these things super tight because you're not gonna do any good by doing so anyway. You're only gonna strip out the aluminum engine block parts things. Let's try this. The hardest part with this stuff is, I don't know if you're going to be able to see me with my big head getting in the way. Okay, there we go, it's started. And I don't know where my extension is. What did I do with, did I drop that too? Yes. What, what's really nice is most of this stuff could be done with a 10 millimeter socket. So it's not really hard, it's just... Yeah, see I'm over here now, I don't, you, I don't know if you can see me. I am not repositioning the camera to set this up. So that was only three 10 millimeter bolts I had to take out just to get the blower cover off, right? And then there's the other stuff. Oops, almost smashed my thing. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is, okay, so we didn't take anything off over here. Everything seems to be fine with that. Here's this doohickey. Like I said, this thing I think is utterly stupid, but we got to put it back on because it's not ours. That's the 13 mil. And here's the 10 mil that's 500 feet long for some reason. I know that this uh, this bracketry that's the, or the bolt holes that this bracket is mounted to is for the externally governed version of this motor um, or this engine rather. This engine does have a version of it that is has an external governor, where engines and golf carts they don't have external governors. So it's all part of the transaxle which is basically a fancy way of saying rear differential with forward reverse in it. 
Uh, let's see. Okay, so we're done with that. Let's slide the carburetor on. I think what I am going to do, though, while I have this off, I'm going to do this off camera. I'm just going to drop the gasoline out of the bowl just so I can see what the condition is. I want to try to restore this. Okay, so this is how it come off. Put it on like so. We're going to put on... I'm probably going to get in the way of the light here while I'm doing this. Just hang that there. What I need to get now is the choke. Don't forget to put the choke cable on first because you will be fighting the carb if you don't already have it off. So you put the choke down into this hole here and then it finds its way into this slot. Sometimes it will fight you. Sometimes you got to hold your finger over it. Come on. Oh. Never mind. It's side by side. I thought it was another truck. Okay, there we go. See, this this is stupid. It's a pain in the ass. If you ask me. Oops, I think I got to move my Yeah. I got the drain for the bowl in the wrong spot. rotate the bowl put that out here so it's forward oh come on ratchet okay now we'll slide the carb on here we'll put this bracket on actually we have to click this in there first Push that under there. It's not the right carburetor. I mean, it works, but make sure everything moves freely. Okay, I know it's dark, guys. It's hard to see. It's not the uh, most optimal setup here. All right, so we'll put this back on. Put this back on. Okay. I'm gonna tighten that. And don't go over tight with this manifold either because this cheap ass plastic will break. And uh, these stupid things are not cheap for what they are. Okay, right. Now we're gonna install the PCV hose, like so. Linesman pliers, please. We're gonna grab our clamp here. I like linesman's, linesman's, lineman's pliers, wow. Can't say that say that three times fast because they are they have a nice wide blade on them all right and we're going to take our now this is going to really block everything but we're going to take our intake air hose box thing we're going to drop our nuts in here i know this is going to be a bit out of shot here just bear with me I mean, you really want to see me tighten these up? Probably. This one here. Okay, no extra bolts. Tighten this up now. Like so. Doesn't have to be gahunga tight, guys. Just tight enough. Click, click. There we go. Torqued to factory specs. And then we're gonna put our hose clamp on our intake hose. Tighten her down. And then the last thing we need to hook up, which I should have done before, is the fuel line. Yep, I know you can't see. It's as good as it's gonna get. Here, I'll even do this so you can 
See, and poorly white balanced lighting. How's that? You see what I'm doing? Probably not. Fuel line. Actual physical labor involved with getting to said part could have been a lot easier if this was built and engineered a little bit different or designed a little bit differently. But it's done. I think the customer will be happy. We'll give them a call. We'll get this thing out of here. We'll move on to the next one. So thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to comment down below, like, subscribe, do all that YouTube thing stuff that everybody says you should do. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video. To here. Make sure it's tight so it don't jiggle free on me. Take the brake off. We'll start. Beautiful. All righty. She lives. As you've seen in the beginning of the video, this thing did not blow out any. It didn't even bark. It just kind of put, 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 put. So that fixed it. And now that is a genuine Kawasaki part, so we don't have to worry about farting around with aftermarket Amazon, eBay garbage, or even some of my vendors, that's all they, they sell. They don't even sell the genuine stuff, which is a little annoying. Um, so stuff like ignition parts, I will actually go to a dealer and get it. And what's nice is it's not a very expensive part. So there you have it, guys. That is pretty much it for this one. I'm going to try something a little different. You get to see my face a little bit more when I do these video closeouts. The fix was simple, but the actual physical labor involved with getting to said part could have been a lot easier if this was built and engineered a little bit different or designed a little bit differently, but it's done. I think the customer will be happy. We'll give them a call. We'll get this thing out of here. We'll move on to the next one. So Thank you guys very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to comment down below, like, subscribe, do all that YouTube thing stuff that everybody says you should do. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video.